Hello, yeah, so right now we're going to talk about various things about quadratics and how they work and how we get solutions. Um, we can have two solutions to a quadratic, uh, or we can have one solution to a quadratic, or we can have no solutions. And if you follow the pattern here, what am I defining as a solution? Well, it turns out that basically a solution exists if the graph crosses the x-axis. But what's so good about that? Well, when the, when the graph crosses the x-axis, that is the time when y equals 0. Right? So y equals 0 is right there <coughs> for these points where the x-intercept is. We call it the x-intercept. <coughs> but when y equals 0, what's x? We don't know what x is. And so we can answer both these questions, by the way. Not only can we find the numbers, uh, find out what these x values are, we can also, even before we do any calculations or do any apply the full formula, before we apply the full formula, even get an idea of how many solutions exist even beforehand, even before we do the full calculation. So um, the idea is uh, we apply this kind of interesting formula called the quadratic formula. And basically we have um, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And b squared minus 4ac is the contentious part of this formula because you can see that, you know, maybe it's possible that b squared minus 4ac might end up with a negative number. And if we have a negative number under a square root, we're not going to be able to plot it on the graph. It won't be, as far as we're concerned, a solution. So here uh, we have, well, we have another thing here too. This, this plus and minus business tells us that, okay, it's possible that when we add this square root, we get this answer. And when we subtract the square root, we get this other answer, right? So adding and subtracting and, uh, gives us the possibility of having two answers, which is what we're looking for because, in fact, a quadratic can cross in two places. But what if we have this scenario where it crosses in one place? Well, going back a bit, where it crosses in two places, we're saying that b squared is greater than 4ac. If b, if this number is bigger than this number, what's under the square root is going to end up being a positive number. And if it's a positive number, we can get a square root, and that means we have something that we can add to b, negative b over 2a, or subtract to negative b over 2a. So there's two solutions when b squared is greater than 4ac. What about when b squared is equal to 4ac? Well, what does that do here? If b squared is equal to 4ac, it's like we're subtracting a number from itself. And when we're doing that, we're adding 0 to negative b over 2a. Well, that means that negative b over 2a becomes um, unchanged. And if we subtract 0 from negative b over 2a, also it's going to be unchanged. In other words, we're going to get one answer instead of two, and that's this scenario. It's where you have a parabola which is either concave up or concave down, but in either scenario, if it simply just grazes over, just touches the x-axis in one place uh, by its uh, vertex, as we call this, then we say that there's one solution. That's when b equals, sorry, b squared equals 4ac. What if b squared is less than 4ac? We covered greater than, sorry, we covered greater than, we covered equals to, but what about less than? If it's less than 4ac, we're taking away a number that's bigger than this number. So if we're taking away a number that's bigger than this number, we're going to get a negative. And underneath the negative, it's going to be undefined. Well, what does that look like on a graph when it's undefined? It means that the parabola doesn't even touch the x-axis anywhere. It means this is what the scenario looks like. Maybe we have, maybe we have this kind of a parabola where the parabola simps simply goes up forever in both directions 
and we have at the lowest point a place where it doesn't ever touch the x-axis. Same is true for this situation where it's concave down and the end behaviors go downward forever, but its highest point is still not close to, the, well, still not anywhere near the x-axis. So we say for these two scenarios that there are no solutions. One solution when it just touches and two solutions where it crosses in two places. So that's the idea. Let's try some, let's try some definite examples. So, okay. So let's say for our first instance, a equals one, b equals two, and c equals three. Now, if we applied this formula, a one goes here, the two goes here, the three goes here, then we say that y equals one times x squared is still x squared, plus two times x, so that's two x plus three. Does this ever cross the x-axis? Do we get solutions out of this? Well, we need we can do a, a brief test. b squared minus 4ac. If, if this is negative, then we know there's no solution. If it's positive, then we know there's two. If it's zero, then we know there's only one. So we try this. Okay, so b squared, that's b, two. Okay, so two squared is four. Take away four times a, what's a? One times c, that's three, that's 12. And that's four take away, oh, I'm sorry. This is three, the whole thing is 12. Four times three is 12. We're taking away 12 from four. Well, we end up with a negative eight, which is definitely less than zero. So there are no solutions. And when there are no solutions, we know that we cannot go any further. It's useless and pointless to do this whole calculation if this is negative, there's no point in doing it, okay? So no solutions, we go no further. What about if I just tweak the minus sign on this? I'll use the same numbers, a equals one, b equals two, but this time c equals minus three. Let's try it. This means that we end up with y equals x squared plus two x, take away three, and that's our quadratic. So if we try b squared minus 4ac this time, well, it's 4 times a, which is 1. <coughs> sorry, not. I'm sorry. b squared, b squared. So b squared is 2 squared. That's 4. Take away 4ac, 4 times 1, times negative 3. What's that equal to? So we have 4 take away, see 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, take away negative 12 is the same thing as adding 12. That's 16. Okay, so now we have a number that's positive, so that means we have two solutions. Because this is a positive number, we can now proceed to find what the solutions are. Okay, so then we, then we do the full quadratic formula. x equals negative b, well that's going to be negative, negative 2, plus or minus, well we don't need to do this again, we already know, we already know that the answer is 16, so we plus or minus the square root of 16, all over 2, 2 times a, well what's a? Oh, 2 times 1, that's 2. So we have negative 2 plus or minus What's the square root of 16? What's the square root of 16 here? Six, that's 4, isn't it? All divided by 2. So, okay. It looks like we can divide 2 into all these terms. So, two, negative 2 divided by 2, negative 1. Write it this way. Negative 1 plus or minus 4 divided by 2 is 2. So, we have two answers x equals, let's see, negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1, or negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So we have now two answers, x equals minus 1, or x equals, sorry, x equals positive 1, or x equals minus 3. So the algorithm then is that if you 
if you um, find that you get a negative b squared over b squared minus 4ac if that becomes negative like like it did here you don't have to do any calculation any further but if you get a positive answer you have to do the calculation and then it becomes x equals 1 or minus 3. So that is